came from three states, including Kogi, uh, Imo, and Bielsa. The Supreme Court has affirmed the re-election of Doye Diri as governor of Bielsa State. The Apex Court dismissed the appeal filed by candidate of the APC, Timmy Perry Siva, in the 2023 governorship election in the state. A five-member panel of the Apex Court in the judgment, read by Justice Lawa, Lawa Galwa, upheld the judgment of the Court of Appeals delivered on 15th July 2024. The appellate court had held that Mr. Silver's appeal was an abuse of the court processes for filing two notices of appeal. The Apex Court position is that an appellant has the right to one notice of appeal and not multiple. We are very happy that today again, Governor Edire has won. You will recall that uh, this has been a series of victories affirming his victory at the election. At the election tribunal, we won. At the court for appeal, we won. And today, too, at the Supreme Court, the final court, the highest court of the land, we have also won affirming his victory at the polls. So we are very happy that the appeal filed by Silva has been dismissed, having been found by the Supreme Court to amount to a gross abuse of justice. Similarly, the Supreme Court dismissed the appeal filed by the Social Democratic Party and its candidate, Mutala Ajaka, for lacking in merit and substance in the Kogi State governorship tussle. In a unanimous judgment, the Apex Court held that Mr. Ajaka failed to give cogent and verifiable evidence in the series of allegations against Governor Usman Ododo. Uh, Justice Abubakar Omar, who, led, who read the lead judgment, held that most of the allegations were pre-election matters that ought to have been taken to the Federal High Court for resolution before the election. And this was when the Supreme Court affirmed the election of Usman Ododo as governor of Kogi State. Now, this vish video shows where some political thugs attacked um, SDP candidate Mutala Ajaka at the Supreme Court premises. But while the Apex Court also upheld the re-election of Hopu Zodima as governor of Imo State, a five-member panel in a unanimous decision dismissed the appeal brought before the court by the People's Democratic Party and its candidate Samuel Ayawu in the last governorship election. In the judgment delivered by Justice Mohammed Baba Idris, the court resolved all the issues raised for determination in the appeal against the appellants. And uh, away from that, President Bola Tinobu has sworn in Justice Kudarat Kikirieko as the acting Chief Justice of Nigeria. Justice Kikirieko, who is second in line among the justices of the Supreme Court, was recommended to the President by the National Judicial Council. President Tinobu says the acting CJN has established a reputable and incorruptible record all through her career. He also described her as a brilliant lawyer and trailblazer. The president urged Justice Kudarat Kikiriako to be faithful and loyal to the Constitution and defend the judiciary's independence. He urged the justices to be faithful and loyal to the Constitution, defending the judiciary's independence in all that they do. Justice Kikiriako is the second female Chief Justice of Nigeria after Justice Aloma Maria Mukhtar was sworn in in 2012. The new CJN is also the fifth female justice elevated to the Supreme Court. Nigeria's acting chief justice, Kujira Atolatopongo Kekereo, come to this position with an 
miracle family and professional wedding. Over the years, she established a respectable and incorruptible reputation within the bar and the bench, which assert the cause of justice. A better judiciary is for the benefit of the entire nation. Whatever the uh, shortcomings that we see today, we're all members of the society. So if we want to see improvement, let the improvement start with each and every one of us and our approach to justice. Let us all also have faith in the system. And then we we'll also be more particular about the process of appointment. I know it gives a lot of um, concern, discipline, on the bench and on the bar as well. All these things are aspects that we look into. From our special advisor to Governor of Bayelsa State and Legal Matters, Godwin Tam Deodemo, uh, joins us on the news at 7. Uh, walk us through the process of getting this victory at last at the Supreme Court. How much of a daunting task has this case been for the state governor? Uh, Mr. Deodemo, how much of a daunting yeah, task is this victory uh, been for the Bayelsa State Governor? If you take a walk back through what the case has been like. We'll probably we'll get back to this conversation subsequently when um, former special advisor to the Governor can hear us clearly. Um, to other news now, acting governor of Niger State, Yakubu Garba, says banditry attacks are likely to affect agricultural productivity this year. He stated this during a condoless visit to Angunwun Megiro in Shiruru local council of the state, where bandits killed more than 13 people. Chinami Bamae reports. So far, eight bodies have been recovered from the deadly bandy attack that killed no fewer than 13 persons. Some persons drowned while trying to escape the onslaught. Their bodies are still missing. It was just about a year ago that Awisu Yahaya lost his father to bandit attack. A year after, his elder brother has also been killed by bandits. He was 30 years old. He was talking with my mother and then and by the next thing, nobody called him again. The state government is here to meet the people on a condolence visit. His mother is still grief-stricken. She couldn't come, but his aunt is here. It all started suddenly, and since it started, it has been from one nightmare to the other. We are always attacked. Our people in the village don't sleep with their two eyes closed. Sometimes in the middle of the night, they, they, these bandits start chasing them, and most of them will sleep in the bushes. The acting governor, Yakubu Garba, is here to sympathize with the people. He describes the attack as callous and say it is affecting the socio-economic life of the people. It has to affect the outcome of agricultural revolution of this very government. Because the people who are predominant farmers have been chosen away by this bandit. So you don't expect us to have adequate bumper harvest or season as expected. Let me tell you that 75% uh, uh, of Shiroro is in the other side of Lakma, where the population is in this site. That's the vast land that has been completely deserted by our people. How do you expect us to have adequate bumper season as expected? It's not possible. So it is such an incident that happened off deployment and off uh, community I mean, settlements. That is why it is important that we initiate investigation to understand exactly what happened. Attacks like this is no longer new to the people, but every time it happens, another family is sent into mourning. The people in this place are paying with their lives just because they have mineral resources in their area, which is what the bandits are coming after. Economic activities are grounded in this place because they can no longer go to their farms. Chenemi Bami, TVC News, Kuta.